going to film a video now, okay? <laughs> He's so cute. Hello and welcome or welcome back to another episode of Expanding the Feywild for D&D or any other role-playing game to try and make it a more dynamic and interesting and fun experience for players. If you are a DM who wants to run the Feywild or a player who just wants to know more, then this is the video series for you. I've made a few others covering the Feywild in general and also certain key players, especially Archfey. And in this one, we are going to talk about Baba Yaga. I'm gonna do it a little differently this time. I am going to first go over the idea of the week, a new thing I started where I want to highlight one comment each week that I think just had a really good idea. Next, I'm going to go over the folklore of Baba Yaga before I get into her D&D tradition because she is in the D&D realm. But before that, for centuries, she has been a big piece of Slavic folklore, especially Russian. The idea I wanted to highlight this week comes from the Great Wall of Nowhere, who says that in their campaign, any dreams that the players have actually take place in the Feywild and or the Shadowfell. If you did something like this, it would mean that your players are getting a sort of psychic insight into what's happening. Maybe they know and understand that they're seeing stuff that's really happening. Maybe they think it's just symbolic or metaphorical and don't realize that it's real. But I think it'd be especially interesting if your players didn't know it was really happening, that they were actually getting insight into something. And then later on, they saw sort of the natural consequences of something like that happening and started to piece together, oh, I'm getting glimpses into the lives of very powerful beings in other realms. I think it's a fun idea and it has a lot of room for tweaking and optimizing for your campaign. And if you too want to have the idea of the week, then make sure to comment below in this video, just letting me know what ideas you have with Baba Yaga or other things related to the Feywild that you think other people might want to include in their campaigns. Without further ado, let's go over some basic facts about Baba Yaga. She is a classic witch in Slavic folklore, first of all, and her name sort of translates to grandmother witch, although it's definitely not a perfect translation, but it's sort of the best we've got for English at this point. I read that she was created by the devil himself alongside 11 others, and she will accompany death on its rounds, I guess, trying to eat new souls as they're released. Super creepy and it gets creepier. In most stories, she lives in a hut that runs around on chicken legs. Ooh and if there's a fence surrounding the hut, it is topped with human skulls. She also flies about in an iron kettle or a mortar and pestle, and she'll use the pestle to like steer. And I read somewhere, I have a lot of links below, so I don't know which source I picked up what information from, but if you wanna know where I'm getting all of this, check the links below. But one of them said that when she uses that pestle, she will stir up tempest below her. She sounds pretty evil, and she is, but, she doesn't always cause evil in the end. She can actually bring about a lot of good through her evil actions. In many stories, she plays a role similar to the fairy godmother in Cinderella, but with like a Brothers Grimm kind of dark twist. When she encounters people, she wants to eat them if they're children, and if they're not children, she'll put them to work or imprison them or sort of trap them in some way. She's also considered a trickster figure. Some classic stories and one called Baba Yaga's Black Geese. Two children are warned by their mother not to go outside when the black geese are flying about in the air because apparently these black geese are meant to find children for Baba Yaga to eat. Gross. Of course, the children disobey their parents and they get captured, but through using a series of magical items, they're able to escape. Moral, moral of the story is listen to your parents. In the most popular Baba Yaga story, there's a woman named Vasilisa the Beautiful, and she plays the Cinderella role where she and her dad had a great relationship and he married an evil stepmother, but then I believe the dad died and she was left with the stepmother who has two stepdaughters. But Vasilisa was given a doll by her mother that was supposed to keep her safe. And so whenever her evil stepmother would give her really, really impossible hard task, the doll made it so that she was always able to get it done, which infuriated her stepmother, who, to try and end it, would start to send Vasilisa out into the forest to do tasks there, knowing that's where Baba Yaga lived, 
who would probably try and eat Vasilisa if she was caught. Vasilisa eventually runs into Baba Yaga, who tries to also give her impossible task. And with the help of the doll, Vasilisa manages to continue to succeed, which drives Baba Yaga crazy. It drives her so crazy that she eventually just sends Vasilisa away with a magical fire in a skull. And when Vasilisa gets home and brings the skull into the house, it immediately lights her stepmother and evil stepsisters on fire. And with her newfound freedom, Vasilisa is able to meet and marry a king. Let's be clear, Baba Yaga is evil. She eats children, and she's also a liberator. Some cultures see her as a goddess of death and an earth mother, where you can imagine the image of breaking the earth and breaking the soil and harming it in order to plant crops and raise life out of it. People point to her as an inspiration for leaving your comfort zone, confronting the dark bits within yourself, that's what she's supposed to represent, and then finding freedom through that acceptance, although hopefully you're not eating children. Of course, there is so much more folklore behind her, so many stories that include Baba Yaga. She has been a central figure for centuries. I am not going to cover it all here. I tried to sort of pick out the main stuff, uh, but like I said, check the links below if you want to learn more or just do a, some research on your own. She's a super weird, but cool figure. Now let's talk Dungeons and Dragons, and in that game or any role-playing game that you want to incorporate her in, she's generally considered a hag. Hags are known for being evil, cruel, fey beings, and to create a hag, um, and Baba Yaga, by the way, is considered the mother of all hags, a hag who already exists, like Baba Yaga, would go and steal a newborn baby, maybe one right out of the womb, eat it, <laughs> and then one week later, give birth to it herself. It would look like a normal baby, like it did before it was eaten, and it would grow up normal up until 13 years old. And at that point, that child would turn into a hag. In the new Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign, spoilers, 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 um, the three hags that form a coven in that campaign are all the daughters of Baba Yaga. And they will join covens to increase their power. They have certain abilities when all together within a certain square footage of each other that they would not have on their own. And in classic Feywild fashion, they love making tricky bargains with people. They love having consequences tie into these bargains that pretty much negate the good that came from getting what you wanted from this hag. They also love ugliness and evil and they see beautiful things as what's actually ugly and ugly things they find beautiful and they want to make themselves look as horrific as possible two more fun facts about her one she can be a warlock patron that'd be weird and fun and two the mortar and pestle that she drives around in lore they're real artifacts in the realm of D&D and they have some pretty cool abilities now for some game ideas i've been wanting to incorporate these to sort of say hey here's some specific examples of what you could do with this character rather than just have her exist in theory. So here's three ideas that I came up with for this character. They're not terribly specific, so I want you to try and be able to, you know, make it your own. The most broad would obviously be have your party meet Baba Yaga. Maybe they know it's her, maybe she's in disguise as someone young and beautiful. They can make deals with her, which have consequences even if they don't realize it and they could even maybe need an item or an artifact that she could provide for them but maybe she cursed it this next one might be a little intense you probably know what your party's comfortable with but have baba yaga steal a baby where the party is now responsible for rescuing that baby before she eats it and if you want to take it a step further maybe have them rescue the baby and not realize that they were too late Baba Yaga already ate it, re-gave birth to it, and it seems like a perfectly normal baby, but in 13 years, it is going to turn into a hag. And this last one is a little bit more for flavor, but it includes some black geese in your campaign. Pull from that old story where, you know, ravens are classic. You can have ravens as beings that spy on you, like in Curse of Strahd, I think that's the thing in that campaign, where um, Strahd can maybe see through the ravens or talk to you through them. I haven't read the book, so I'm just guessing here. But have that be 
black geese for Baba Yaga. Plus, people like hate geese way more than they hate ravens. Make him the honking, biting, hissing kind, you know? Like, really get that geese energy. That is what I have for you this week on Baba Yaga, some of her Slavic folklore and history, and her D&D &D background and lore. As always, comment your ideas below. Let me know how you might want to use Baba Yaga in your campaign. And also tell me, is there anything that you specifically want me to look into while I do this Feywild series or anything else D&D related. I love free ideas, so please. A good DM community, in my opinion, begs, borrows, and steals. Let's do that in the comments. Beg, borrow, and steal. And that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great whatever it is, and I will see you next time. If you like and subscribe. Well, you don't have to like to see me next time. Whatever. End it there. End it there.